Okay, so I wanted to talk engine quench here while I got the, while I'm getting ready to put the heads on this budget small block. Um, but what quench is, is the distance between the flat top part of your piston and your cylinder head. And um, the, di the gasket thickness distance also factors into that. But what you're after is 35 to 45 thousandths. Now see from the factory, these pistons that I re-ringed, um, they almost come out of the board just a little bit. So they're almost above the deck. So that's really what you want. And then you can go by your gaskets to get the correct um, thickness for quench. The, uh, the idea behind quench is that you get more of a complete combustion and it really helps to prevent detonation. So quench is very important to have that 35 to 45 thousandths. Um, now where the problem comes in with rebuilds in this quench area is rebuilt or um, pistons that most pistons that are sold are not the same as these height as these factory pistons because they're sold to a mostly mass engine building places and what they get is a lot of just bare stock blocks and the decks are all dinged up so they got to deck the uh, they got to deck it down and when this head surface is decked down then they're in the proper um, then they'll get proper quench out of that. But for most people at home, and when they don't deck their block, you'll see that the piston actually will sit into the combustion chamber a little bit. So that's really a problem. So if you're rebuilding a motor, you really want to look into this and get your block decked because that 35 to 40 thousandths quench is really, really nice to have. It makes a huge difference. When I The first few motors that I did, I wasn't aware of this and I really had to run some retarded timing and really dumb down the tune just for just because I'd get pinging from not having these set right so with this quench you can run 10 to 1 with iron heads on pump gas without much of a problem but it's really important now these pistons here it's only the flat top part of your piston so these valve reliefs don't factor into the quench and this uh, um, dished part does not factor into the quench. It's only the flat top part. So if you can help it, you want to run flat top pistons because they're a really big performance advantage for quench reasons. But flat top pistons and all that boosting compression gets hazardous to uh, your engine performance when you don't have your block um, and piston clearance decked correctly. So um, get a side look here so you can see that that piston is just ever so slightly even coming out of the bore so it'll be just about perfect and um, we'll basically go by our gasket um, compressed thickness and then that'll be our quench so with a stock camshaft we should be good we shouldn't be having to worry about clearance issues especially with these valve reliefs here so um, pretty much we're good to go but that's something to think about when you're build, building your motor and especially when you put aftermarket pistons in is you really want to watch this because this can really vary so anyway so that's engine quench for you something to be aware of okay so now we're going to go ahead and install our lifters now I like to soak my lifters, um, even though it might say this is unnecessary, I just like to uh, do it anyway, but with this, the heads that are going on this, they're pedestal rockers, so they just torque down to a torque spec, so really this isn't even important, but for me I just like to do it, but when you prime up your oil system, um, it should pump these up anyway, but it's always good security, and uh, you don't have to do it, but it never hurts it's never gonna hurt you to do it so what we're gonna do is take our <laughs> our oil covered lifter here and we're gonna be using our assembly lube for probably the last time here so and I'm just gonna coat the underside of this lifter with a real 
heavy coat of this because it also rides on the camshaft. So, and then we're just going to slide her on in there. And there she goes. So, we're going to get all of these coated up and installed the same way. And then we should be ready to move on to installing our heads. Okay, so now that we got our lifters all in here and pushed all the way down with our high pressure assembly lube on the bottom so they um, are good for the camshaft break in. But what I'm going to go ahead and do now is clean all the mating surfaces before we put the head gaskets on. So just going to use a standard carbon choke cleaner and get a nice coating on a rag here and just run around that mating surface and get all of our oil from our greasy fingerprints and everything of that nature off. So that's real important to sealing the head gasket or any gasket for that matter. So you always want to be sure to do this on all the mating surfaces. All right, so once you're sure that your gasket mating service is good and clean and you want to make double check that and make sure um, you're ready to install your head, you want to make sure that you have your dowel pins in because if you, if you don't have these, your head will not be centered upright, so you definitely need those. Um, and then the last little bit here is head gaskets are usually side biased, so... As you see on these fell pros, they say front, which means the front of the engine, which would be towards the water pump. So we're going to go ahead and lay those on there. So if you're not sure, you shouldn't have any coolant passages showing on the front end of the motor. Um, and then we can just go ahead and get our head set up here and we want to be careful not to damage the head gasket so you don't want to do a whole lot of sliding around And there she is, good and seated down. Notice there's no space in between here. You want to make sure it's seated on both those dowel pins before you start sliding any bolts through. Okay, so you're ready to drop in your head bolts. And um, what I've done is before I installed the head and all this, I ran a thread chaser down through my head bolt threads. So they're good and clean. And I made sure to clean up my threads on all my head bolts and they're good cl and clean and free of oil so what I'm going to go ahead and do is use some of this Permatex thread sealant um, this is high temperature so some of these bolts I'm not I'm pretty sure it's these top ones but I'm going to put it on these bottom ones as well go into the cooling jackets of the engine and if you don't um, seal these up it'll actually leak and you can blow out your head gasket and a whole bunch of problems so we're gonna go ahead and get these all sealed up okay so we're just gonna take our thread sealant here and get a good coating on there and just wipe it around and down and in So. kind of a waxy kind of a waxy substance so I'll just get these all I'll do all of these the same drop them in here and then I'm gonna 
get them all snugged up before we go on to torquing. So you want to make sure that you use this thread sealant, especially on these top ones here, which I'm almost entirely sure go straight into the cooling system. Um, that's something to be mindful of. So we're just going to get all these sealed up here and we should be good. Okay, for the sake of time and so I just simply don't bore you to death, I'm going to go ahead and torque these all off camera. But you want to go in a three-step process and the torque spec, I believe, is 70 foot-pounds, cylinder head 70 foot-pounds. So we'll go ahead and um, I'll post a picture of the pattern that we need to go in to do that. But um, you want to go in a three-step process to the 70 foot-pounds, uh, like just basically the same way we've torqued everything else. So, but one thing to look out for with some of these cylinder heads is they have a really um, close clearance here between this head bolt and the engine head. And you need a 12-point um, a socket that's real slim to get in there and to torque that. So we'll go ahead and get this all torqued down, but that's something to be mindful of. So not like I'm using this socket, but this is just a good example. You want a real thin walled 12 point to be able to get in here to get that bolt and make sure you're getting it torqued right. So we'll go ahead and get that done. Okay, so after we got the heads on here and torqued down the proper pattern, we should be good to install our valve train assembly and adjust our valves to the way they're supposed to be. Um, the last note I want to make on head gaskets is you want to be mindful of the head gaskets that you have because some head gaskets require that they uh, be retorqued after the engine's been ran. So if you have those, you want to make sure and retorque those. Um, or whatever whatever the directions say to do with them but most of the standard ones like this you put them on torque them once and you're done so we're ready to move on to the valve train <laughs> 